worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So good to be back inside the house of God. You can be seated tonight. Amen. Mark chapter number 2, verse number 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. It was noise that he was in the house. Straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as but the door. And he preached the word unto them. Amen. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. When they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where, they, where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, look at this, folks, check this out. When Jesus saw their faith, faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee I'm going to stop here real quick I've got, I've got just a, several scriptures to say but I'm just reminded of something by this scripture he says your sins are forgiven because I like what I just saw but I, if you think about it you look at the word of God what did Jesus do when he died on the cross and that man to his left was saying, oh, please, if you'll just remember me, and the Lord says, you're going to join me. Who could do those things? God could only do those things. Only God can do that. He says, was um, a sick lay there, and Jesus saw the faith. He said unto the sick, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, amen, and we got a lot of scribes in Las Vegas, and reasoning, reasoning in their hearts, why doth this man speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived this in his spirit, and they reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? He says, You're talking amongst yourselves. I'm going to stop there and say something real quick. Anytime you try to reason with your own flesh and your own self, and you're not reasoning with God, you're going to come up with man conclusion on how to fix things, on how to overcome things. And it doesn't work unless you got God in the equation. But he says in verse number 9, he says, Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. He says by faith. This is what the definition. He says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and, thy, and, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, amen, took up the bed and went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and blew their socks off and glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. You know what the NIV says about that? He says, we never saw it on this fashion. NIV specifically says, we have never seen this kind of stuff before. That's what the NIV says. For just a few minutes, I want to preach on this thought. Just keep this in the back of your mind real quick. When your response determines your outcome. When your response determines your outcome. Let's go before the Lord because I really feel like we really need to tap into something right now. God wants to move and God wants to speak to somebody's heart tonight. Lord Jesus, 
We love you tonight. We praise your wonderful name, and we know you're here into this place, God, and we want to re-invite you, amen, into the inner courts of praise, God. We love you. We magnify you, God. We know, and you know, that their hearts that are in this place desire you, Jesus, and we love you so much, and, and we want to see a move of your spirit in this place, God, and so we ask right now that you would touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our spirits, and your precious Wonderful, wonderful name in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise before we're seated. Let's thank him. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. There are several things I believe we must understand about God in order to see the miraculous take place in each and every one of our lives. In order to experience it or receive the Holy Ghost, uh, you, to, to have revival, to walk in victory. In fact, whatever you need from God, if you can get a revelation of what I'm about to talk to you tonight, amen, real quick, I'm not going to be long, um, amen, it, it, it's going to make all the difference in your situation if you'll grasp exactly what I'm about to tell you. Uh, you have to understand, number one, that God has all power and all ability. Can you repeat that? God has all power and all ability. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven. We need to take some Bible quizzing around here. What's going on? And in earth. What does that mean, y'all? That means God doesn't just work in the heavens, but he works inside the earth. Well, I don't believe he does because I ain't never seen an act of God. Yeah, you have. The times that God is keeping you alive, every time you wake up and you're alive and you got air in your lungs, that's an act of God. God has restored your life. There's a reason why, amen, you're coming to the house of God. There's an act of God. God has all power. God possesses all power. There is nobody that has power except God Almighty. There's no government leader, there is no dictator, there is no military, there is no force of mankind that is actually today competing with God's power. There isn't. None at all. Amen. Because Jesus Christ, amen, God Almighty, hallelujah, has all power. He says, in the Bible, he says, I have all might. And if somebody did have some might, what, what might would he have if Jesus already said, I have all might? There's no room for somebody else to have that kind of power because Jesus said, I've got all the power. There is no force of nature. There is nothing that mankind can create. There's no disease. There's, uh, amen, nothing on this planet that can compete with the power of God. And so you got to understand that the God that we serve is the source of all power. Amen, all power, anything that claims power, anything that looks like power, understand it's a falling power. It's not the real thing. It's just an imitation of what God is. It's not God. Amen. There is a source of power. The power that God possesses, it knows no limitations. It, in fact, it doesn't even have any boundaries. God's power doesn't have no boundaries. It's unstoppable. It doesn't matter what kind of obstacle we run into, amen, what kind of plague or what kind of trial or disease or what kind of financial situation we get in ourselves into or what kind of crisis we get in, amen, God's power overcomes it all. He overcomes everything, everything that is against God. His power goes under it, around it, and also breaks through it. There is no stopping God's power. God has the final ruling. Amen. Not our local judge. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, God's got the final say. I don't care who the judge is for your case. God's got the final say. It don't matter what anybody says. God has the final say. Amen. There's nothing that can restrain or bind God. There's nothing that can stop the power of God because the Bible says, I have all might. Amen. I have all might. That's all power. Amen. You know what? Too many people have this idea 
that God and Satan, they're locked in some kind of arm wrestling match and, 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 and who's going to win? Then, let me tell you something. Satan was created by God. In fact, God leases hell to Satan. He says, here's the keys, but I'm the landlord. I own everything you touch. In fact, Satan has to get, look, this is weird. I know this is going to sound funny, but this, anytime you go through a trial, all right, every time you go through a trial, my God, I've got the Holy Ghost. So much is going on right now. I don't know what's happening. All this stuff, I got a phone call the other day. Pastor, what's going on? There's all kinds of stuff happening right now. And I told him, bind up. I said, pray a hedge, blah, blah, blah. I said, and all this stuff. And, and, and all this stuff that happens in your life. You know what this means? Before Satan decided to wreck your life, before Satan ever decided to say, hey, I'm going to kick you while you're down. I'm going to do all this stuff. Before he was able to, to get near you and try to do all these things. You know what he had to do first? Hey, Dad, uh, big cheese up there. Can I go bother that guy? He, I know he's your saint. I just want to test him. You go right ahead. <laughs> Satan's got to get permission before he starts dissing. That, that rhymed pretty good. <laughs> Praise God. But let me tell you also, when Satan starts messing, that's when God can start blessing. Amen. Praise God. Oh, no, it's an arm wrestling match. It's one or the other. No, 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 it's one trying to dominate the other. Uh, that can't happen, folks, because God is almighty. God created him. In fact, you know what my mom used to tell me when I was a 14-year-old punk? And I was just causing problems and stuff like that. And boom, just th thinking I can do my own thing. My mom says, you know what, son? She says, I brought you in this world and I can take you out. I said, whoa. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't think that's, you can't say that today. <laughs> but that's what my mom used to always say. She said, I brought you in this world and I will take you out. You ain't, uh-uh. I made you. Who do you think you are, punk? That's what my mom used to say. Who do you think you are? I'm like thought I was bad. I had my 14-year-old friends around me. Like, you know, when I'm around them, I'm like, I'm God. I'm like, yeah. And then when my mom comes around, like, it's like someone deflated my chest. Because that's how, that's how Satan and God is. Satan is the way, same way. He's a scaredy cat. He's the same type of individual. You know why? Because he has no power and authority over your life. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got something that Satan, amen, a, amen, was so jealous of. Amen, when he saw you get the Holy Ghost, he says, oh, man, they got power. They got power. Praise God. You know, sad is sometimes we act like we don't have that power. When you've got the Holy Ghost and something arises, you, you just throw in the white flag and try to, try to come up with your own thing. No, no, no. Don't ever doubt God. Don't ever doubt them. Some of you need to stop sitting around and being intimidated and being scared of the tactics of fears of Satan and what he can do. No, no, no. There's nothing he can do because the Bible says, amen, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. There's nothing that can take away or diminish that power, amen, in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You've got enough power, folks, to put the devil in his place. Listen, it's going slow right now, but it's fixing to speed up here because God spoke to me about this. There is somebody who is lacking something, and that is faith. When you begin to grow in your faith, you're going to start doing the unimaginable. You're going to start doing things that's going to make people scratch their heads and wonder why is this guy even doing what he's doing. It's because you have stepped into another realm, into another dilemma, into another dimension with God and another level with God. And you said, I can see the unseen thing right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about hell and heaven. There is no competition between the two. There's no competition between heaven or hell. Hell is hell. Heaven isn't scared one bit over hell. We're scared of hell. Some of us are. But God's not scared. And the devil and the, and the angels are not scared. 
Because they know who their father is and who the power where it comes from. Amen. I just, I really, you know, I, I, I come to the point where I don't care anymore what the doctor says. I don't. When the doctor says, look, you're going to die in two weeks. Hey, hold on, bub. That's between me and my God. That's what God wants. If God wants to take your life, God will take your life. If God's going to do something, I'm sorry, you're going to lose your house. No, 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 no. That's between me and my father. That's between God. You don't tell me what and what I'm going to lose and what I'm going to gain. It's between me and Jesus. As long as I'm the child that I'm doing right, God's going to take care of my family. Hallelujah. Praise God. Doctors don't rewrite history. God does. Lawyers and doctor and, and, and judges and city counselors and pro, all kinds of people, dictatorships, whatever, they don't write your history. God writes it. God does the work. Hallelujah. And whatever happens, it happens. Just let God take control. We were looking at a house that we were wanting to get. And we weren't able to get it because of a, a, a money situation. It said they wanted so much. I think they wanted like... Uh, 60 million a, a month and I said well we can't afford that right now praise God and, uh, and 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 so yeah we if we did take it you know we would be in a financial bind every month and, and we would be hurting and let me tell you something don't ever put your family in that position don't put your family in that position Look out for your family. You do what is necessary. God's, as long as you're faithful and you keep doing what you're doing, amen, God's going to, he's going to increase your blessings by, by giving you what you need and by what you want. Because he blesses the wants and the needs. But we turned it down. We says, no, we can't, can't afford that. And we end up taking the house of Montezuma. And, 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 uh, and I'm so glad, brother, because we were praying about this. I said, God, this, this is your will. This is your will. I prayed. I said, God, if you want my family and I to live in a cereal box, you just let me know. Whatever we got to do, it's up to you, God. And I said, I don't want that. But, but if you do, but I don't want that. You know, I'm trying to reason myself. You know, there's that reason again. But, uh, but God, he knows. He knows every situation. And God, it, it, listen, the doctors, they'll tell you one thing. They'll... I got doctors telling me about my stomach. They can't find what's wrong with me. I got these pains and stuff like that, and the doctors haven't uh, found anything. I took CTs. I went to the colonoscopy. I went to uh, X-ray, um, even the uh, sonogram, everything, and they could not find one thing, not one thing. But I haven't had a pain, and I can't remember how long. And just, being, and just trusting in God and saying, God, you know exactly what's wrong. You know what's going to happen. We got a friend, Brother Marcos. Sister Langford knows exactly who they are from, uh, I don't remember the church, Brother Sogi's church out there in Fraser Park, California. Got a friend, Brother Marcos, who's married to the pastor's daughter. And Brother Marcos, he's, uh, he's a full-blooded Mexican uh, from Mexico and uh, married the pastor's daughter. And... Uh, Brother Marcos comes from a very wealthy family, very wealthy family. In fact, when Brother Marcos went to go visit his mom, Brother Marcos was kidnapped. He was kidnapped by uh, Mexican cartels down there. This is a true story, y'all. He was kidnapped and bind, and I don't remember how long he was in, he was in this uh, in this jail, in this room, but he said the concrete was cold. He says he can hear all kinds of men around him and people, and he was blindfolded and, hang, and, and tied up, and he was on the ground, and he would get kicked every day and punched and beat up, and they would put the phone of his father on his phone, and they were trying to get a ransom and trying to get money, but his dad, uh, I, think, I think they finally paid him off, and it was like over $500,000 to dad. Uh, he wired 500000 to the cartel, and uh, by the time they released him, they released him towards in somewhere in Mexico, and they picked him up, and they took Brother Marcos back to the United States into the hospital. When Brother Marcos got to the hospital, Brother Marcos, had he had three cracked ribs, a broken jaw that was broken in half. His brain was bashed in. He can barely uh, was conscious, and, and he lost a lot of blood, and, and, and so he was basically on a lifeline here, and, and he, he, he could wake up, and he couldn't speak. His, his jaw was literally cracked in half. 
they, they cracked him, and, and I don't know what they hit with him, but, but, but I'm sure it was with objects and stuff, but, but he had a cracked jaw, cracked ribs, and he was just messed up in the hospital bed, and there he was, and just praying in his mind. They can hear him praying. He was calling out to the Lord Jesus, and he said he prayed when he was even in that dungeon. He said he cried out to the Lord, and they would kick him, and they would push him because he was crying out, and, 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 and here's the thing, the, the most awesome thing. The doctor said, if he keeps retaining in this, this situation, he may not be able to make it, amen, uh, he may not be able to make it as the same person. He'll live, but he's not going to walk the same. He's not going to talk the same. There's going to be a difference in his life, and you know what they said? They said, that is up to Jesus. They said, that's up to God. And they believe it. You know what they did? True story here. Brother Sogi's good friends with somebody who is tied in with Brother Lee Stone King. Called him up. Told him what was going on. Brother Stone King called Brother Sogi. He says, I'd like to talk to your boy, Marcos. He says, yes, he, uh, he can't talk. He's unable to talk. He says, I don't need him to talk back. I just need to put this phone in his ear so he can hear my words. He got that phone and he put it to Marcos' ear. And they put it on speaker where Brother Stone King was talking. Brother Stone King was just praying the prayer of faith. He said, he said I don't remember exactly the words he said, but he said, in other words, he said, it is not up to the doctors to pronounce your condition. It is up to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is up to him what he wants to do. And right now, he says, we are going to claim your healing because you're going to walk out of this place, amen, healed 100%. And he started to pray. And they were all praying. And if anything can boost your face when Stone King calls on the phone like that, you're like, whoa. You know, it's got to hit. And so they're all praying, right? And all this is going down. Brother Sogi said he saw this. He'd never seen this before. He says, I saw in the middle of prayer. He says, I saw, he says, I saw my, my son-in-law. His chest was bouncing like this. And then all of a sudden they saw his jawbone start to crack in place and start to move up. And Marcos' eyes started to open up. And, and, and then Marcos says, what's going on? And they said, you just been healed by the Holy Ghost. The doctors came in and they couldn't understand what was going on. They said, I don't understand why, why it has happened here. And they said, it's because it's up to God. It is not up to man. It is not up to the judge. It is not up to the city it is up to Jesus hallelujah it's up to God that determines your faith praise God I'm so glad we serve God I would rather rely on power on a source of power like him than manpower don't give me 90 billion dollars because it's not going to save my life. Give me the Holy Ghost and a salvation and a sound mind that I can walk with God. I just, 2018, brother, brother Valdez, I just don't care what the bank says. I really don't. I don't care what the, the employer says. I don't care, amen, I don't care how bad the family is. I don't care how bad your marriage is. God is bigger than all of that. God is huge. He can do anything. He can fix anything. He can build anything he wants to because there's no power on high just like him. He can break curses. He can break addictions. Amen, amen. Stuff that you've been battling with, God can fix it. God can break the habit. He can break the curse. Hallelujah. God can set you free. He can deliver you tonight. You got to have the want to. You got to say, well, I refuse to live in a prisoner this year of 2018. I, I, I want to live for God. I don't want to live in a prison in my own mind anymore. I don't want to live in a prison. Did you know that there's so many people that are in the house of God that are locked away in prison? There is. There's people that are in prison in the house of God. You can sit on a pew, a Pentecostal apostolic pew, and still go to hell. Just because you walk inside church don't make you saved. It doesn't. 
I'm not here to patty cake or sugarcoat anything. I'm just going to tell you straight up right now that if you step out of your comfort zone and you get out of your own place and say, you know what, I'm tired of being in prison. I want the main thing. I want God on my side. I want to step out in faith. I want to believe it before I see it. The problem with us is that we don't see it, so we don't believe it. Well, I ain't seen nothing yet. I don't care. There was only one Thomas, amen, that Jesus had to prove. Jesus don't have to prove you and I anything. He just says, you know what? If you believe, you're going to get it. But if you don't, I can't work with people who can't, who, who's got a faith like a two, like a, like just, you know, who's got a faith like a 35-year-old or a 39-year-old. He says, I want people with faith like a three-year-old. You remember when you were six years old, you believed anything. The cuckoo, he's going to get you. <laughs> you tell me something like that today, man, I'll be like, whatever. But it's true stuff. Give me a mind of a child. I want to come to God as a kid. I want to come to him as a baby so I can believe him. I can do what I'm supposed to do. Somebody needs to tell hell where they're going. Somebody needs to tell the devil, look, bud, you ain't going to mess with my faith anymore. The reason why he messes with your faith is because he knows what your faith is capable of doing in your life. He knows that God, let me tell you something. If anybody knows who Jesus is, it's the devil. If anybody knows the word of God, it's Satan himself. Because he knows exactly the power that's in this book. He knows exactly the word the scripture says the devil has but a short time. He knows and understands that he only has minutes and hours on this planet right now. He knows that God's coming back for a people, amen, like you and I that has made themselves ready. He knows that when you get out of your comfort zone and you start believing what you're preaching and you start believing what you're speaking, he knows that it's going to happen and he's going to do everything he he can to stop you from making it happen. Hallelujah. Praise God when your response determines your outcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has got more power than you've got difficulties in your life. Someone really needs to get a revelation of this because God wants to do something. God wants to heal in this service. He does. God wants to do it. Amen. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to claim to be an apostolic and not believe in the power of the divine healing of God. I want to be apostolic and believe it. Hallelujah. It's God's will to heal. Amen. It's his will to undo sickness. Amen. It's his will to break chains in your life. It's his will to, to straighten us out. I've watched so many times God raise the dead. In the past, I, I've seen so many times where God, amen, uh, 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 healed cancer, amen, or, or he healed some type of sickness, uh, uh, amen, and, 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 and not once you could see those things for some reason when you see them. From somebody else, it's a different story. It's a whole lot different when it happens to you, though. When you get healed. When you see somebody get healed, it builds a type of faith. But when God heals you, there's no stopping you. There's no stopping you. Amen. Amen. I want to see people, I want to see more people run the aisles. I want to see more people get out of their comfort zone and worship God. I want to get out of a routine, y'all. I want 2018 to be different in this place. I want us to have a different perspective of church and to do things, watch this, out of the ordinary, out, out, out of doing things differently. What are you talking about? We, we do two songs here, one song there, pray, boom, boom, you preach, altar call. No. I want us to release the power of God in this place by giving God the liberty to do what he wants to do. Not by what we want to do. You see, sometimes God can't move when we are in the way. 
God also, you know what God wants to do? You know how it happened one time? When I didn't get to preach, God says, I'm going to move in this service, and I'm going to do something. Well, we don't need to wait for things like that. What we need to do is say, we are going to tap into you, God, before you tap into us. And we're going to reach the throne of God. When you get into that state of mind and you get out of your comfort zone, amen, when you get out of that, there's no telling the direction God is fixing to take into that service. Amen. When you get out of routine and you get out of the step and, and, you, and you just you get out of that, that line dance and say, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. When you start to, 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 to not follow the rules, amen, of the, uh, the, the, the normal, amen, way that we have trust. Church, God's going to do something. I'm telling you right now how it works. When we step out of line and say, you know what? I feel like worshiping God right now. I'm just going to praise him. Hallelujah. There is not a set time where we ought to lift up our hands, run the aisles, praise God. Amen. Magnify him. We ought to worship him every time. Amen. When you feel him and when you don't feel him, you ought to lift up your hands and praise God anytime. Hallelujah. Because when your response determines the outcome of the service, there's no telling what God's going to do. No telling what he is going to do. Your response determines what happens in the house of God. Your response tonight, amen, to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to see people run out. And we can do that. We can run aisles all we want. We can knock doors until our knuckles bleed. We can do everything we want to do. But let me tell you something. When one of you gets touched and healed by the Holy Ghost, listen to me. We are not going to be able to contain the people in this church. We will not be able to do anything about it. When somebody gets a revelation, when one person in the house of God stands up and gets a revelation of what God has done for them and what he can do, amen, he's going to say, look, y'all, it's been right here all along, and we've been sitting on it the entire time. It's like sitting on a pile of gold, amen, and saying, you know, I got bills that are due here. I've got things I got to do here. But all the while, you're sitting on a pile of gold, not knowing. Oh, and it's underneath you the whole time if you would step out of your comfort zone when your response determines your outcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're not going to be able to contain it. We're not going to be able to restrain it. I want the Holy Ghost to blow out somebody. Amen. To blow your mind like you've never been blown before. Hallelujah. 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 Well, pastor, uh, I've been living like this for a long time. Well, maybe you need to change your response. Maybe you really do. Maybe you need to get out of your slothful ways. God's here, but I'm here. Maybe you need to change your ways. Maybe you need to change the way you, you pray. Maybe you need to change the way you talk to God. You know, it's sad to say that some people only talk to God literally for five minutes a week when they're in the house of God. I'm going to give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I'm done. You go and do your own thing. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be surprised somebody who told me said, I don't talk to God at all, only on church nights. Really? Yeah. But pastor, I'm going through all this stuff. I've got all this. I, I, I don't know what's happening. Maybe you need to change your response. Change your, your response with God. Stop doing what you've been doing for so long. Stop allowing yourself to be somewhere else when you're inside the house of God. Stop allowing your mind to wander off into the wilderness when you're in the house of God. When God says, I need your worship. I need your mind. I need your heart. I need everything about you. I need it. But we don't ever give it to them. You know, some people's idea of faith is just believing and hoping for something for the best. Well, hopefully God will do that. Maybe God will bless us. Maybe God will make it happen. 
That, you know, I'm going to tell you something. They know that's not faith. That's hope. You're just hoping. You got to have faith. Faith. Faith is unseen. The miraculous take place. It's unseen. It's not even seeing the miracle take place, but you already believe it's happening. I have enough faith to believe that God's going to give us a church building. Even though we prayed for that building on the other side and we're not inside that building right now, that does not determine the outcome of my own faith right now. That does not hinder my faith. All that tells me is, thank you, Jesus. I'm in the right direction. If you didn't answer that prayer, I'm going to keep praying until you answer the prayer. And out, my, my, my. If you just get out of your comfort zone and say, you know what? It's going to take faith. God just wants you to step out and say, God, I believe it. Even though it's not right in front of me, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Your faith has got to involve action. Your faith has to, it has to have a response. People that really have faith, they don't sit around and talk about it. They don't sit in circles and say, well, you know, maybe, uh, uh, maybe one day God will decide to do something. Uh, when faith is in your world, amen, until it drives the miraculous into your world. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. Faith, the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. That much faith. That's all the faith God wants from you. No doubts. Doubt is yourself. Doubt is faith in the devil. Doubt is not even of God. But faith is of God. Faith, God, that's why he says, if, you, if it's just your faith, if it was the si size of a mustard seed, it could move that mountain. God was illustrating what our minds could do in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something has to happen in our faith. It needs to happen. I prayed about this. I really did. I prayed about what God wants for 2018. I said, God, I said, 2018. I said, what are we focusing on? And all these things came to me. I began to pray. There's two things that God wants to give Las Vegas, New Mexico, Bethel, Pentecostal Tabernacle, our church right here, our small little sanctuary. This is the things that God wants to give us. He says, I'm going to give your church miracles and prodigals. And I began to think, oh, man, we had miracles last year, and it was awesome. I said, this is powerful, God. I said, are we going to get more miracles or what's going to happen? The miracles are going to take place by the faith of the people. When your faith exceeds out where you can't understand it and you don't even know what's going on, but you believe, amen, God's going to give you the miracle. Begin to even think about this. I, I, I begin to begin to think. I'll say, this is great, God. This is awesome. This is what, exactly what we need. But when the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, prodigals, he says, I'm going to give you prodigals and miracles. Prodigals are backsliders. Prodigals is somebody who used to live for God. Begin to think about it and, and, and contemplate God. I pray for all the backsliders in this city. The revival is going to come when the prodigals come back home. When the prodigals come back home, the miracles are going to take place. Everything started to line up exactly the way I saw it lined up. You know, your faith begins to increase when you see people that you love so dearly. Musicians, if you come at this time, I'm about done. When you see, when you see people coming to the house of God that you love, your own kid or your mom or your dad, and they don't have the Holy Ghost no more, but they used to live for God. But when they come inside the house of God, what's the first thing that the family member that lives for God does? They start to cry. They start to love God. They start to praise him. And they start to believe. And their faith begins to increase. God is speaking to us. He's going to bless us for our works. That's why he's going to give us prodigals. But right after prodigals, 
God's going to increase the miracles because of our faith. I believe that tonight. I'm not expecting the entire congregation to believe that because I know what God's wanting to do in this service. God is wanting to heal somebody in this service right now. There is somebody in this service that God wants to heal. Hallelujah. I want to let God do his work. Let's all stand tonight. Let's, let's let the Holy Ghost do what he wants to do in this very hour. All I want to do right now is obey the Holy Ghost. That's all I want to do. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whatever God wants to do, I want what God wants. Is there anybody in this church here right now? I want you to be honest when I ask you this. Is there anybody in this building right now that desires a healing from God? That wants a healing from God? That wants healing in their body? That says, God, I desire a healing in my body and I haven't received it. I want a healing right now. If you have that healing, I want you to just make your way to the front right now. I'm not going to go chase you. I really felt to call you up here. I'm not trying to blast anybody out on, on open. But I want you to respond to the Holy Ghost tonight. Because I want God to work in this individual's life. I want God to do what he wants to do. God wants to heal somebody's body tonight. If you desire healing in this service, I want you to make your way to the front right now. And allow God to heal your body. Allow him. Just say, God, I'm going to make my way. I need a healing. Here's the thing, folks. This is where God's trying to work in. The reason why I can't heal you is because you don't ask. It's because you don't come to the dinner table when God says, I want to give you. I've got something available for you. But you refuse and you stay where you are. And you say, God, maybe next service, maybe another time. But there isn't another time. God's saying today, right now. And the reason why we don't get what God wants us to have is because we will not get ourselves out of our comfort zone. We will not push ourselves out of our pews and say, God, I know if I walk to the front, it's like a light beam that's showing on my body, on my face, God. And if I don't move, God, I know I'm not going to give what you want you have available for me but God is saying this tonight if you just step out of your pew and you're stepping out he says I'm going to count your walks as faith as walking towards me tonight I'm going to give you exactly what I want to give you God desires to heal you God desires to bless you God desires to fix things in your life You've got to step out and say, God, here I am. I'm stepping out in faith. I'm going to walk toward the front, God. I'm going to get exactly what you want me to have, Jesus. You don't get it because you stay. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And he also said, if you'll knock, I will answer the door. If you call my name, I will reside where you call me to. Jesus. That's it, lift up your voices. Allow the Holy Ghost to do a work. God could only heal the, will, the willing. God only heals the willing. He only heals those that wants to be healed. He can't heal you if you don't believe and if you don't want a healing from God. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices to the King of Kings. He's in this place here right now. Jesus, Jesus. We love you, God. Jesus, Hallelujah to the Lamb. The That's it. Come on. Consecrate, intercede, dig deeper where you are. God, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Something about the name Jesus. 